Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the chat window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speaker your questions from the chat window. Your questions in the chat window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Jason Chu from JSR Life Sciences. Thank you, Leah. So today, let me, so today I'd like to introduce Chromoset. It's an innovative modular chromatography platform currently being developed by JSR Life Sciences. So I'll explain how this technology with its last supported bed can help users to achieve a highly productive and fully disposable process that can scale to any volume with any resin. So chromoset, so the name, how it came about is it's essentially a combination of the words chromatography and cassette, and you know, combine them, you get chromoset. So the modular technology platform and a novel resin support device that has the separation capabilities of conventional column chromatography, but all the convenience and benefits of a cassette format. So its most notable design features is its unique internal scaffold, which provides constant support of the resin bed throughout the cassette and enables superior pressure flow properties for resin beads of all sizes. So without the constraints of pressure and flow, um, high productivity processes requiring less amount of resin can, can be achieved. So it's an open platform in a pre-packed and disposable format that allows any manufacturer's resin of choice to be run in the cassette. This eliminates the need to pack and maintain columns. Also, the cassettes can be disposed of once the resin that they're packed in reaches its maximum life cycle. So with its modular form and linear scalability, the benefit is that resin volume can be scaled up more accurately to attain the volume that matches the protein loads for any given process that you're running. Um, cassettes are fully interchangeable with a conventional column system. So therefore, you can see on the right, uh, a 100 liter column chromatography setup can hypothetically be swapped down the bottom with a 100 liter cassette system. So the benefit of that is that processing footprint is thus reduced and the cassette's ease of use and quicker change over time can increase your bioprocess manufacturing efficiency. So shown here are the cassettes that have been made so far. Um, on the left right here is a four mil, uh, six centimeter bed height cassette, a 13 mil, 20 centimeter bed height cassette. And on the right is a one liter cassette with a 20 centimeter bed height. So the four and 13 mil cassettes on the left here, they're the self-contained individual cassettes. Uh, they're nicknamed SPD um, for, for the, the description that I just, um, I just um, uh, stated. And they're as close to plug and play as possible, which means that no holder was, is required to operate the cassette. Each cassette actually contains an inlet and outlet. So you, you can see it here shown cap with the red plugs. Uh, that can be easily hooked up onto a small-scale FPLC chromatography system. So the SPD cassette is intended for process development and scale-down purposes. However, as I mentioned before, the prototype of the one-liter cassette right here on the right um, is currently under development. So, so far, the one-liter will be the minimum size for GMP production and will require the use of a holder since they'll be stackable to achieve the proper scale in manufacturing. So let's move over to the right. On the top right here is a graphical representation of the flow path through the cassette. So it's just to give a little more clarity into what's going on inside the cassette. So the cassette contains an inlet and outlet, as I mentioned before, um, and that allows for a linear flow that's evenly distributed through using flow distributors at the top and bottom of the cassette. The flow is, is normal flow through the cassette. Um, on the bottom right, it's a magnified 
cross-sectional area of the internal lattice. Um, and here you can see the internal lattice packed with resin beads. Um, it's basically a magnified look at how the resin beads fit uniformly within the lattice supported internal matrix. So I'll talk a little bit about wall effect here. So and how the chrome effect can remove this type of constraint or can add to this add to this um, or take advantage of this um, benefit in the with using its um, internal matrix. So the wall effect is a well known phenomenon in conventional columns, as we we all the chromatographers out there may know. So it's known in chromatography that the wall effect dramatically decreases as the column diameter gets larger. So in other words, the support of the resin beads decreases as you move away from the column wall and towards the middle of the resin bed. Um, but it really isn't an issue with the chromosome cassettes. So given that the chromosome's internal scaffold, as you can see right here, is filled with thousands of pockets which serve as essentially mini columns, the wall effect applies to all beads remain constant, even as cassettes are stacked together to scale up the resin volume for the manufacturing process. So each bead essentially is exposed to the same wall support regardless of what size cassette resin is in and what scale the cassettes have been stacked to. So therefore, the cassettes can be truly scaled up linearly without having to worry about the loss of bed support, worry about potential for bed collapse, and you, know, you don't have to worry about pressure limitations at high processing flow rates. So, Basically, with a resin bed that's highly supported by chromosets internal matrix, we're now able to run at high velocities without worrying about pressure constraints. So to demonstrate the superior pressure flow properties of chromoset, compared to what's observed in a conventional column, um, let's take a look at the graph here. Let's compare a small scale five mil, six centimeter bed height set, uh, as sh shown in the red, uh, with its closest counterpart, which is a five mil, five centimeter bed height column, and both of which are packed with fractal gel, TMAE. Um, it's a resin known to be compressible and has a bead size of about 20 to 40 microns. So in this graph, the pressure gradient is normalized to bed height, uh, it's, and it's plotted as a function of flow velocity on, on the x-axis. So you can observe that the normalized that the normalized pressure gradient for the column increases exponentially as flow rate is increased. But for the chromoset cassette, it actually maintains a linear velocity. Um, for the column, it'll quickly reach critical velocity, but, but yet you see a linear relationship maintained for the chromoset um, pressure flow profile in the red. So it's pretty remarkable that a 50% decrease in pressure drop can be seen at around, say, 800 centimeters per hour for the chromoset packed with fractal gel at this scale. So let's scale up the process a little bit and compare a one liter cassette with various pilot scale columns. So all of them have been packed with JSR's Amsphere A3 protein resin, which has an average bead size of 50 microns. So you can, again, you can see the immediate benefit of the chromoset scaffold. Similar type of pressure flow profiles are observed again for the column, um, the groups of column here in the yellow, and the cassettes in the blue here. Even that larger scale uh, linear relationship is still maintained with the chromoset. <clears throat> so at say 2.5 bars of delta pressure, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see a 70% increase in the flow rate between the columns in general and the one liter chromoset. So an increase in flow rate means that a higher productivity, productivity can be obtained. So in this case, again, the wall support in a chromoset is much more stable with increasing flow rates compared to that in a column. So lastly, I uh, kind of want to talk a little bit about resin, de resin design and how the chromoset can be leveraged for new resin design considerations. So currently, chromatography resin vendors need to balance the mechanical properties of the resin against its mass flow transport ability due to pressure, pressure flow limitations. So with the current paradigm on the, on the bottom, bottom right, 
of the quadrant. Uh, pressure flow limitations drive bead and pore size designs, which can lim limit mass transferability and dynamic binding capacity. So essentially, current resin designs are based relatively on larger beads with smaller pore size. Um, you generally get a moderate dynamic binding capacity, uh, slow binding, and hence moderate productivity. But with the chroma set, without these pressure flow limitations, so the possibilities opened up for resin design less restricted by bead and pore size restrictions. And that can be eventually optimized strictly for just mass transport. So with Chromoset, we can go from the current paradigm on the bottom right quadrant to the future state in the upper right, uh, which is defined by resin beads designed for optimal selectivity, fast binding, high DBC, and what JSR has trademarked as hyperproductive processing. So hyperproductive processing is obtainable with Chromoset with this open resin platform. Um, and it's, it's sort of the holy grail that we ultimately all want to achieve, which is, you know, for chromatography for everyone, is the utilization of resins with um, very high dynamic binding capacity. Um, so design of these new types of resins, um, that can be processed in a, in a very short amount of time. So that's, again, that's what we, we kind of call hyperproductive processing. So that is my last slide, and now I will take any questions from the audience. But thank you for, for your time, and thank you for listening to the introduction of our new uh, Chrome Set technology from JSR Life Sciences. Okay, great. Thanks, Jason. So the first question is, what resins have been packed in Chrome Set cassettes? Sure. Um, so far, we packed around 15 to 20 resins. Um, and these resins have been, they come from a variety of different sources, so, and manufacturers. Uh, so type, the types of resins that we packed, we successfully packed into the cassettes, and um, the small-scale small, small scale cassettes specifically, so the 4 mil and the 13 mil cassettes, um, we packed uh, resins such as size exclusion resins, uh, cation exchange, anion exchange, um, affinity, you know, the, your, your, you can imagine your major affinity chromatography resins out there. Mixed mode, we've packed also hydrophobic interaction uh, chromatography resins. So we're always continuing to explore new resins for chromoset packing um, at this point. So we're always open to, 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 um, to working with new, um, new companies to, to pack their resins um, for whatever scale they're, they're, they need to be using it at. So the column efficiency test results as, men as measured by as asymmetry and ACTP for all these resins that are packed were all within acceptable range, you know, based on industry standards for, for the packed cassettes. Okay. Can you explain the scale-up strategy and how do you effectively increase column diameter with constant bed length? Sure. So scale-up strategy, um, I'm um, reading right here. How you explain the scale of strategy? So scale strategy, I, th I think right now, um, since it's still a, it's still not commercialized, and we're still testing our prototypes, um, especially at uh, the one liter scale right now. So at the small scale, the four mil and thirteen mil, we've actually stacked um, four cassettes together. So. The, uh, the six centimeter and the 20 centimeter bed height, um, we've actually stacked them together and we demonstrated that the pressure flow properties, uh, the elution volume, the asymmetry, the ATTP, and the dynamic binding capacity are, are, are pretty much all comparable between individual cassettes and, and the four uh, cassettes that have been stacked together. So this was again. This was this was demonstrated for, for both the six and the 20 centimeter cassettes. So right now we're still in the middle of trying to um, um, stack four by one liter cassettes together and, and doing that same testing to, to demonstrate that there's no difference uh, between the individual cassettes and stack cassettes for for um, for pressure flow and and everything else that I just mentioned. But yeah, we're currently currently doing that testing, and so, so far no 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 issues so far. 
Okay. And how is the performance in terms of HETP and then real case study of purifying protein from crude starting material? So the HETP, uh, I'm trying to read where the question is here. Okay, how's the performance? So how's the performance in terms of HTTP and a real case study purifying protein for crude starting material? So the performance in terms of HTTP, they're all, um, it's, the HTTP will be dependent on the resin you pack in, but we've all achieved essentially acceptable HTTP range with these cassettes. Um, in general, the, um, the reduced plate heights for all the resins we pack have been, have been less than 10 at 300 centimeters per hour. Um, we, since given that, you know, HTCF um, is a pretty expensive material to obtain, we've mainly been working with um, purified protein to run some of our dynamic binding capacity tests, some of our um, breakthrough tests. Um, and we did do a case study with a uh, macro prep, macro prep SP resin. Um, so it's a, it's a resin that we did. We packed a, a column with a six centimeter bed height, and we packed a chromoset with a six centimeter bed height, and we compared the breakthrough, the DVC, the elution, gradient profiles, um, using a salt gradient profile. And so they were all pretty much similar. I think the only difference between, between the column and the chromoset that we packed with the, the macro prep ST was that the pressure flow, again, the column is much, much higher um, when you run it at flow rates between uh, 200 to 2,000 centimeters per hour. And so this case study that we did with the macro prep SP, we actually have a, um, a application note if, 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 if anyone's interested out there in, in seeing. I can, I can definitely send that over. It's also on our uh, website that's um, on, this, uh, on this slide. Okay. Great. Yeah, we can send it out to the audience as well. Um, yeah. Is, does the size of the bead resin affect the chromoset performance? Yeah, that's actually a good question. Um, we, so chromoset, the point of the chromoset, given its internal matrix, is that you, again, like I mentioned before, the wall support is, you're, you're going to have superior wall support for all resin beads packed inside. So the resin bed is much more, much more stable, even for smaller resin beads. We have done some experimental studies with our, uh, with JSR's A3 resin. Um, so results are being, still being summarized, but we've, we've uh, so the JSR A3 resin is actually a 50 micron bead resin, but we've, we've uh, developed a prototype 30 micron bead resin and we tested it in a chromoset and the pressure flow properties are actually still unchanged. It's still a linear relationship. Um, and with a smaller bead, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. You can actually obtain a much, much higher, um, given that you can run at higher uh, flow rates, and given that a, as you decrease the bead size for a resin, your dynamic binding capacity will go up. So given those two elements, we've, uh, with the 30 micron, bead resin, um, the prototype from for, for Amster A3, we've actually, uh, we've actually obtained, you know, um, experimentally a, a pretty high productivity of 200 grams per liter per hour or, or more. So it's, um, that's, those results are still being, being run, being summarized, but, you know, just, just, for, just the proof of concept is actually there for, for the potential for, for um, high, you know, hyperproductive as JSR has trademarked for hyperproductive processes with um, with smaller bead resin size. So again, smaller bead resin size, you'll increase your dynamic binding capacity. And when you put a smaller bead resin size with a high dynamic binding capacity in a chromoset with a stable internal matrix, you can run at higher flow rates. So thus producing higher productivity. Yeah. Okay, great. So I have one more question. It looks like there are a lot more audience questions. We're not going to be able to get to all of them, but Jason will be sent them and can respond to you and follow up with you individually. Mm -hmm. So the last question I'd like to ask um, is, are there any plans to make the smaller scale cassette a commercial product and could they be made to stack like the one liter cassette? 
Uh, I think get, right now we're thinking of having the one liter cassette as the minimum size, um, just because I think with the 20 centimeter, which small scale cassette right now, that's a 13 mil cassette. That's pretty a pretty small volume for for uh, most GMP processes. Um, but if you're so if I if I'm understanding the question correctly, we so let me let me back up a little bit. So we are launching the 20 centimeter small scale cassettes as well as the six centimeter small scale cassettes commercially. But those will be those will be mostly dedicated for um, process development and scale down work. I think at that scale, the volumes would be probably too small for any sort of clinical GMP operations. So one liter and beyond will be what we will be looking at for um, for GMP uh, commercial commercial scale. So in the you know phase one through phase three or even commercial GMP operations will, will be will be will be that size. Um, we need to kind of gauge the market demand and needs before deciding on cassette sizes larger than one liter. Uh, I think after one liter, most likely we might go with a five liter, since you know a handful of five liter stack cassettes could be could be um, large enough for a small to mid scale clinical operation, um, which you know you can that can range from a 20 to 40 liter resin volume. So uh, beyond five liter, we still have to consider the the market needs. Um, larger cassettes such as 10 liters could be useful. But to you know to essentially achieve larger resin volumes. However, you know when you get to that size, you may have to start considering um, ergonomic considerations of how these cassettes could be handled and managed um, safely in, in the plant. Um, we haven't really thought that far yet, um, but that still needs something that needs to be considered. And especially the, the design factor would become a critical critical factor when we do scale up to that that size, you know, in the future. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Jason. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, everyone, for um, for tuning in to, to listen to our new introduction of the new uh, technology by GSR Life Sciences. Great. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website. And as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcasts. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Thanks again and goodbye.